What's up Raider Nation? It's Friday and I'm going to be going live on Locals today. So go ahead, become a member. It's 100% free. It starts at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific. The way that it goes is if you guys ask me questions, I'll go ahead and answer them. Similar to what we usually do here on the Raiders Report for Mailbags. I'm also going to be talking about Derek Carr, Avante Adams, everything going on with the 2022 NFL Draft. So if you could, become a member, RaidersReport.Locals.com. And if you see this at a later date, you can still watch it on replay. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to be talking about a lot of NFL news around Earl Thomas because... My DMs are going to be getting blown up around him. We're also going to be breaking down some rumors. Darren Waller, he talked about Derek Carr. We'll tell you what he said exactly. Dave Ziegler broke down what the Raiders' draft plans were. And we're also going to go ahead and look at some different Raiders' mock drafts. Now, I do want to go ahead and type, tell everyone to type RIP down in the comments for Daryl LaMonica, one of the greatest Raiders quarterbacks of all time. And... Unfortunately, he passed away at age 80 yesterday. So all I want you guys to do is go ahead and type RIP. And to show LaMonica that we love him here, we are going to be doing some LaMonica history throughout the show. So I found five pretty cool little tidbits, if you will, on him. The first one, he was drafted in round 12. Yes, round 12. Pick 168 in 1963 to see the other four facts you got to watch throughout the remainder of the show. So probably one of the biggest reasons why you guys tuned in, you saw in the thumbnail, you saw in the title, wait a minute, Earl Thomas to the Raiders. And the reason why we're bringing this up here is not only is my job to talk about rumors, to talk about the news around the Raiders, I also have to bring up trending topics in the NFL. And the fact that Thomas says, I'm ready, I'm in shape, he wants to play in the game, people are like, all right, should the Raiders go out and get Earl Thomas? Well, how about this, y'all? This one is zero, just win, babies. Tuck rule, tuck that. Earl Thomas is not coming to the silver and black. This guy hasn't played since 2019, and the Ravens kicked him off the team for being a bad teammate and, well... For those of you that don't know the whole Earl Thomas story, I understand you want to be close to your relatives, but I'm not sleeping with my brother. Or you know the whole situation. The Raiders don't need, they do not want drama. This is a close group. And yes, I am not all that confident in Jonathan Abram. But you know what? I really like the move of Deron Harmon. I'd rather see what the guys got with Tyree Gillespie. You re-signed Roderick Teamer. You have Dale Levitt as your gunner, so if I hear these Earl Thomas to the Raiders rumors, I'm just trying to shut them down right now. It's not going to happen. On top of that, if the Raiders were like, you know what, we need a safety. Well, guess what? There's uh, a lot of other safeties out there that I would rather have. The Honey Badger, at number one, Tyron Matthew. If you're going to go out and get a safety, I'd rather you spend $10 million a year on the Honey Badger than going out and giving Earl Thomas $2 million. Landon Collins, he has connections already with Patrick Graham. Jason McCourty has connections with McDaniels, Terrell Edmonds, Jaquiski Tart. There are other free agent safeties much better and more reliable and less of a locker room cancer than Earl Thomas. So how about this? I'm saying he's not coming to the Las Vegas Raiders. Not going to happen. Won't happen. Where do you guys think E.T. does end up playing, though, this season? If you're like, you know what, he's just better off going to the moon, riding on his bike. I don't blame you if you don't understand the movie reference and get with the program. Where does E.T. play this season? Here are my top five destinations. If I were to say, okay, I believe that E.T. ends up coming back, plays in the NFL, which honestly, I don't know if another NFL team gives him a chance because of all the other crap that went on in the past. But if I were to say the top five teams most likely to do it, I'll throw out the Dallas Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers, Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, and the Atlanta Falcons. Y'all, we are getting really, really close, and I appreciate the push to get to 113,000 subs. We only need 88 more to go. And if you're wondering why should somebody subscribe to the Raiders Report, news, rumors, videos every single day, and I'm going to be live for the NFL Draft, the whole thing, all seven rounds, all three days here on the Raiders Report. So make sure you click that subscribe button. The 2022 NFL Draft is less than a week away, and one of the most common things that people like to do out there, I like to do them as well, are Raiders mock drafts. So what I want to hit here is I found some of the most recent mock drafts on the internet 
and we're going to break down why places like ESPN, CBS, PFN, PFF, and NFL.com see these teams potentially going out and doing certain things. So ESPN has the Raiders taking Luke, and I got to always get this one right, Gadecki, the offensive tackle from Central Michigan, who I've talked about a few times. Mel Kuyper was like, all right, yeah, this pick definitely could make some sense because the Raiders have a need at tackle, though Gadecki is somebody who I see being an offensive lineman. Sean Ryan, good offensive guard out of UCLA. Daniel Falele, the offensive tackle out of Minnesota. Dylan Parham, the offensive guard from Mich or Memphis, excuse me. And I know what the graphic is, but Haskell Garrett, he's a defensive tackle on Ohio State. So if you were to ask me, okay, Mitch, out of all five of these players that you see on screen right now, who's the best one? Which one would be the most likely or the best pick at 86? This is my answer. I'm going to go ahead and take Daniel Falele at pick 86. And in fact, he was actually in a previous show that I did on the Raiders board about my top 10 targets in round three, pick 86. Just an enormous white tackle prospect who I thought got better and better and better every single season that he was playing with the Golden Gophers. Falele reminds me of Trent Brown in terms of the overall body size and just the, not that he's not athletic, but Trent Brown, when he first came out of college, was not much of an NFL prospect, drafted in round seven. Carmen Brasillo did a lot of good work with Brown, which turned him into the right tackle that he is today. I would like to see what Br uh, Brasillo would be able to do with Daniel Falele, though I don't know if he'd be ready to start right away at right tackle. Guys, not only are we going live today over on Locals, we also provide you a whole bunch of exclusive content. We provide a whole bunch of exclusive posts as well. And if you just need more Raiders content, that's what Locals is all about. So go ahead and join at the link that you see below, RaidersReport.Locals.com. It is free to become a member. But if you want to see some exclusive videos like you're seeing right now up on screen about find out which Raiders player is going to break out, something that the Raiders, I believe, are going to do this season that hasn't been done since 1980, that's where you can go ahead and you can become a supporter for $10 a month or $100 for the year. You get two months for free. It's at the link below, raidersport.locals.com. All right, y'all, remember this is LaMonica History Day as well. RIP, shout out to one of the best. He was a two-time AFL MVP in 1967 and 1969. Also, I'm just going to throw this one in here, was tied for the NFL rushing touchdown lead in 1964 with six touchdowns. Coming up now, we're going to be breaking down the latest Raiders draft plans. And this is regarding around what Dave Ziegler had to say in his interview earlier this week. And before we show you that, how about this? Another one. We're going to throw it in. LaMonica History, his nickname was the Mad Bomber. So if you guys have a certain nickname that you have, throw it down there in the comments. I'd be curious to see what you guys have to say. So in terms of these overall draft plans here by Ziegler, he was interviewed. He's going to try to break down what the Raiders draft strategy is. And if you've watched the show, I'll say for the past two months or realistically since McDaniels and Ziegler have been hired, it's nothing that I haven't said, which the Raiders are going to try to go ahead and take best player available. But hey, if you don't believe me, I see the haters on the internet. It's all good. This is exactly what Ziegler had to say on the Raiders draft strategy. We want the best available players regardless of position. That's how we want to continue to build the team. I think if you're drafting good football players, you're making good choices. When you are overextend, excuse me, when you overextend just to draft a need, you can often pass over good football players that can help your team. That can be a slippery slope if that's the way you approach it. And let's face it, that's the way John Gruden, that's the way Mike Mayock have approached it over the past few seasons. And the Raiders, you just can't afford any more draft busts. If you realistically go back and you look at all the early picks that the Raiders have ma made in recent years, maybe minus the 2014 draft, I could sit here and I can poke holes at almost every single one, and especially the last three. So McDaniels, Ziegler, no more draft busts. Take the best players available. So here in the draft strategy behind that, who do you think the Raiders should go ahead and draft at pick number 86? If you're wondering, well, who are some of the guys that they've at least brought in for visits? I did put this out on Instagram and on Twitter, at MitchellRen365, all 30 of the Raiders' pre-draft visits. But who should the Raiders draft at pick 86? Coming up now here on the Raiders' Sport, we're going to look at 
what Darren Waller had to say about Derek Carr. Before I break that all down for you, more LaMonica history. His career completion percentage, and this is kind of mind-blowing because, you know, in today's NFL, a bad quarter, if you're under 60, it's not what you're looking for. It just goes to show how much different the defense was all the way back then. But 49.5, and in fact, he never had a season over 52%. It's pretty wild stuff. All right, in terms of Darren Waller, there's been a lot of communication of drama. Well, how about this? No car and Waller drama. I'm giving this one four just win babies. Believe it, baby. There, there's no drama here. In fact, when Darren Waller was asked about Derek Carr, his exact quote was, Carr has my back. And he literally said that we know and everyone in that locker room knows that Derek Carr has their back. And when you look at DC's deal that he just signed, it's proof. It's one of the most team-friendly deals, if not the most team-friendly deal that I have ever seen. For a quarterback of that is as good as what Derek Carr is, to essentially take a one-year prove-it deal at about $19 million with only $24.9 million guaranteed, Darren Waller, Derek Carr, there is no drama between them. So I want to just stop hearing about it all. All right, y'all. We're doing a lot of news. We do a lot of rumors, obviously, on these shows. And with the amount of stuff that happens in the offseason, it's really difficult to be able to talk about every single thing that happens on the shows. So if there is something that happens a few hours, let's say, after I put out a video, I will keep you guys up to date. It's important to follow me, especially this time of the year, on IG and on Twitter because I'm always putting stuff on my social media stories. All right, here's the last thing that we're going to bring up. And again, it's the LaMonica history. His 0.801 win percentage is the second best all time. It's pretty good. It's also above Tom Brady. So sorry, Brady, you're going to have to suck that one. But yes, LaMonica, 66 wins, 16 losses. I said that because producer Jack's a Patriots fan. But LaMonica, you will be missed. I should also mention that today is actually Josh McDaniel's birthday. So if you guys want to go ahead and type HBD for Josh McDaniels, please go ahead and do so. Hopefully you enjoyed today's show, and hopefully you're going to be tuning in to my live show over on Locals. How do you join? Raidersport.locals.com. Enjoy your weekend.